Hey, what is up, everyone? Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to do another super, super in-depth Know Your Stuff today. Once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Thank you guys for tuning in for another Know Your Stuff. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below. And at any time during this video, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I love your guys' comments. So today, what we're going to talk about is die-cast cars specifically 118 die cast cars what you what do you mean when you say oh well, what do you mean 118 uh, 118 is the scale which means it's 18 times smaller than a real car a real car would be one to one 118 scale cars are going to be like die cast model cars they're usually die cast 99 percent of the time they're die cast which means um stamped metal and they're going to be about the size of, a, they're pretty much, a 118 is usually around a foot long, uh, between maybe 10 and 12 inches long. So that's how you can usually tell if you got a 118 scale. A 118 scale car in a box is going to look like a shoebox, almost the size of a shoebox. So that's what you'll know um, if you have a 118 scale. And usually on the boxes, they'll say that. So... A little backstory on 118 diecast scale cars is I used to work at a hobby shop in the early 2000s. I ran their eBay store. And so I learned an incredible amount about diecast cars during those couple years that I worked there. It was an amazing experience. And um, I really thank, you know, just having so many jobs over the years when I was younger really helped me in my reselling career so you know when i worked at this hobby shop we sold dolls bears die cast cars plates knives a lot of different things that really helped my reselling career so when i go out in the field i can go check these out so anyways let's get right into it so die cast cars really started to come out in the 1980s is when ertl and uh, Ertl and did American Muscle. I think Ravel even had some diecast cars early on in the 80s. The popularization of diecast cars, or not diecast cars, the the popularization of muscle cars in the 80s. There was a whole resurgence of 60s, 50s, and 70s cars. A lot of people were getting older and were able to afford to buy their older cars, fix them up. So there there is this whole a car culture that was really springing up in the United States. So Ravel and Ertl, which are two companies that we're going to talk about later, were some of the forefathers of this particular type of car. For the most part, in the in the 70s and the 60s and the 50s, if you wanted a, a model car or a toy car, you had to buy a model, a plastic model, put it together, paint it, do all that stuff. So Ravel and Ertl decided that they were going to do die-cast cars. They are already pre-made. And, you know, we're going to talk about that real quick. So, yes, so die-cast cars are a thing that some of you guys might find at thrift shops, garage sales, estate sales, and stuff like this. When I go searching uh, through a estate sale finder and I look through their photos, you know, I can tell what die-cast cars they have just because of the boxes. And we're going to get right into this. I don't know how long this video is going to be. So, actually, pause the video right now. Go grab a pen and paper because I'm going to drop some serious knowledge on diecast cars for you guys today. You'll be an expert by the time this video is over. You'll be able to be like, bam, I know what's good and I know what's shit. So <laughs> let's get right into it, guys. Oh, I'm very excited about this. I know a lot about diecast cars. So first off, we're, what we're going to do is we are going to go through the high end stuff first. And I'm going to show you guys what the garbage is. Now, for the most part, I say garbage. There's some really low-end die-cast, but it's still cool. It's still, it's still, you know, they sell it. I mean, it's still cool, but I'm going to show you guys what is the very high-end and what is the very low-end. So first up for your notes, you're going to want to write down UT Models. UT Models came out, I want to say, in the late 1999s, and uh, they stopped producing stuff, and we're going to get into that in a second. What the UT model that you can actually see, so the, the thing that you, should, you guys should be looking out for when you're looking for UT models is their standard box, which came in this gray box. I hate when I can't click on an image to see someone didn't have high resolution. Anyways, you want to look for this UT models in red. 
and in the silver box with this checker thing. Now they did do a few of them, uh, like this special, like this McLaren right here was done in a specialty box. Which uh, let me see if I can see if they actually ha see it has the weird UT. This is <laughs> if you if you're if you're selling on eBay, you see if you can if you if you're making blurry photos like this. Ugh, you know what's so ironic is this thing actually sold for $160 with blurry photos and everything. Anyways, UT Models was one of the very first higher-end models that came out because before, like I said, there was Revell, there's Ertl, and we're going to get into that later in the show. And so what I'm saying is a lot of those earlier companies didn't really know how to properly produce something because it costs a lot of money to produce these things. I actually, when, we, when I ran... The thrift shop or the thrift shop when I ran the hobby shops eBay site uh, they were in the process of creating their own cars for Franklin Mint and I actually will do another video on that later but what I'm saying is the earlier diecast cars weren't true to style sometimes the bumpers were off the, the doors are off the molding was off UT models was one of the very first higher end diecast cars that made really cool things like even like the brake calipers like really crazy stuff i mean they were really known for these porsches they were the ones that did a lot of police cars here and what we're going to do is we're going to actually sort by the highest price because i want to show you guys some of these crazy prices some of these go to so anywhere in the neighborhood between 100 and 200 dollars is where the base prices of some of these are going to go they're not too super high end and what i'm saying is you could find these and as a matter of fact if i scroll down here i can actually find the the, the hobby shop that i that i worked at um, we actually sold so many of these. We sold hundreds of these over the years that I can actually see a, our sticker uh, that I could see like where they actually bought it from. Let me see if it shows it right here. This is from Canon. I doubt this is them. This isn't one of the stickers. I can I, I could see like one of the price stickers. Um, as you could see, the retail price for this one was fifty nine ninety nine. We used to sell them actually as low as fifteen dollars. And I'm I'm an idiot when I worked there. I actually bought a few and put them away and didn't realize they were going to be worth anything. If I knew how much these were going to be worth back in the day, I would have bought the entire store. Like literally, I would have just worked just for buying the cars because some of these cars that I had, um, some of these Porsches that I had, I sold like 10 years later for almost $200 a pop and I had a few of them. So anyways, that's UT Models. So what happens is UT Models had a good run for a few years, and then it turned into Auto Art, which is right here. Auto Art was basically what UT Models turned into. And Auto Art, the one thing that you can uh, tell that it's an Auto Art car is it has this double A as their logo, and I, you can barely see it right here. Let me see if I can. they have a good video. Okay, you see this double A? It's a capital A with an A. It says Auto Art. That is a good way to tell if you got an auto art car. And auto art usually came in a blue or black box. Let me see if they have some of the standard boxes here. Um, here's an Austin Martin. Man, I, I, I can't believe how much some of these auto art ha have gone for. Because the thing is, these actually retailed. And you're saying, oh my god, $600? Some of these, let me see if they actually have a box. They don't really go in too many of the boxes. These things actually retailed from anywhere between eighty to a hundred and twenty dollars retail. So that's why some of these are actually worth a, a, a ton of money. Is because they were higher end cars retail, like literally a hundred dollars, hundred and twenty dollars retail. And I don't see any really good boxes to show you guys exactly what a standard audio, auto art box looks like. We'll we'll find it right now. They were like these weird, um, they weren't weird, but they were like these blue window boxes. Ah, oh, man, come on. I know someone has it. Here we go. So when you see this auto art box, it's kind of like this blue style. That's usually a, give, a giveaway. This isn't the box. Man, this is having a hard time. Anyways, look out for auto art. That's definitely another thing you should write down in your notes. Auto art is a higher end than UT models. And some of these go for a ton of money. I think I didn't even sort by the highest price on this. I, I, I wanna, oh, no, I did. The uh, Nissan Skyline, this Mercedes went for 800 This Nissan went for almost 800 Another Nissan. So Mitsubishi and Nissans, definitely look out for those. It's just even, look at this Jeep Wagoneer, $650. Man, this is crazy.
this is crazy talk right here, man. But what I'm saying is when you go to garage sales and thrift stores, there's some people that actually donate this stuff because they don't realize they just think it's a toy car and they don't realize that some of these toy cars are super high end and stuff like that. So it's pretty crazy. So anyways, so UT models, look out for those. Auto art, look out for those. The next one is Highway 61. And this is kind of like in between UT models and auto art as far as the high end. Uh, auto art is, is one of the highest end though. I have, if you stay tuned, we're going to go to the very high end stuff. Uh, Highway 61 did pretty some pretty good stuff. As you can see, their Highway 61 logo, that's what it looks like. It was a step up from the Ertl and just like maybe a step below auto art, but it was still, they're still good quality. And some of these still go for a couple hundred dollars. Not all of them are going to go this high. Let me show you guys what the highest prices on some of these are. Wow. I haven't checked these in a long time, but man, this Hemi. Oh, man, look at this. $700, $700, $300. I haven't checked these in a while. I'm surprised some of these have gone up so much, man. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, any, so anyways, that's Highway 61. Write that down in your notes. That's stuff to look out for. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what is the proper price point to buy these? Now, the thing is, if you know what you're doing, $100 might sound like crazy at a garage sale. But if like you know that it's this $700 one... You know, it, it might be worth it to pick it up. But for the most part, how I usually do, because I know a lot about this, so it's 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 easier for me to, to know, like, okay, what my what my budget is for certain things. But if you're picking up die-cast cars, I would say if they're anywhere from, like, $20 and below, and they're not Ertl, and they're not Muscle, and we're going to get into that later. If they're, if I would, so, like, anywhere under $20 is usually a good price point. Even if they're the cheaper ones, you can probably still get thirty or forty dollars. But I would definitely stay away from Ertl and Ravel if it's under twenty dollars. I mean, if it's over twenty dollars, but that's a good price point. A good price point for any auto art, any UT model. If you can get them under hundred dollars, that's usually a pretty good buy. But definitely do your research if you have your phone with you. Uh, next up is the very high end. This is Exato, and it's pretty much. The name just just represents like high end Exato, like oh. So Exato is another company. They're mostly known for racing. They did a lot of these F1 series cars, which is kind of like indie cars. They did a lot of racing things. They did a lot of Ferrari. Um, they had a Ferrari license to do Ferraris. I don't want to show you guys. There's always never. Well, it's good that they're showing photos of the cars, but there's never a good photo of the boxes that are just the first cover photo. Because I want to show you guys the logo, uh, the logo of Exato. And of course, they're not showing it. It's not even an Exato car. So, yeah, so Exato is probably one of the higher end ones you're going to find. Like I said, these retailed for like $100. We sold a lot of these ones before. And definitely look out for Exato. And here's an Exato motor box one. Let's see if they actually show the the front of it. I mean, you can look at these cars and tell that they're that they're that they're higher end from a cheap one. Oh, this actually brings up a good point. So let's say you don't have the boxes. How are you going to know? Well, if you look underneath it, there's usually hallmarks underneath the cars, and usually. Here's another pro tip too. So okay, let's let's back up for a second. You have there's loose cars, right? What the hell is it? Look underneath it. It'll tell you usually the company. If it's a plastic underneath it, it doesn't represent doesn't necessarily mean that it's cheap. If it's a if it's metal, the, the underside, the undercarriage is metal, that's usually going to tell you that it's a really high-end car if the metal is underneath the undercarriage. And as you can see, there's a lot of details. There's the pinion steering in here. There's a lot of good detail. So this will show you right off the bat that this is a good car, um, that it would be worth something. Now, here's the thing about buying loose cars. You want to say, oh, great, this is all freaking rainbows and sunshine so far, Chris. The bad things about these is these things break so easily. Now, I'm not saying the car will break in half. I'm saying like rear view mirrors, antennas. Uh, door handles, hubcaps, um, windshield wipers, all these things can break so easily. And if you don't know what you're looking at, 
you can easily buy these cars, bring them home, and be like, shit, the antenna's broken. And that dramatically sometimes increases or decreases the value substantially. So we looked at those $700 and $500 and $300 cars. If those cars were missing pieces, you're lucky to get $100 for those things. I mean, someone might buy it for more if it's a $700 car. You still can get good money. But what I'm saying is, and this is a word of caution, write this down in your notes. When you're looking at die cast cars, make sure the windshield wipers are there, the antennas are there, the door handles are there, the rear view mirrors are there, the side mirrors are there, the bumpers are there, the license plates are there, uh, the the wheel the wheels are there. That that's like gonna be the very obvious one, but man. Uh, next up we have GMP, which is also another high end brand GMP, and it's like I, GMP always reminds me of GIMP. Uh, GMP was just, here's a good actually of the logo, GMP. GMP was actually just coming out when I left that hobby shop to go onto other avenues. And GMP is another good one to look for. And not all of them, as you can see, are going to be worth a ton of money. But GMP is definitely something to look out for. And GMP, like I was saying, is one of those brands that you definitely want to show you that if you want can pick them up now we're going to get into cheaper brands maisto maisto is probably going to be one of the cheaper brands you're going to find it's probably a step below hurdle i mean there's still good cars and everything and for the money and you say well look at this maisto went for 200 and something dollars well these are a lot of few and far betweens um, some of the very older ones go for a good amount of money, but for the most part, if you see my Easto, look it up. And um, let me show you guys what the box looks like. My Easto is going to look like this. Well, you're saying, oh, well, Chris, this one went for $90. Yes, but what I'm saying is look it up. I'm just saying, I'm just telling you in the spectrum, there's some dog turds that are probably worth like a million dollars. You know, there's still dog turds though. <laughs> Anyways, Maisto has this gold kind of Maisto logo. Look that up. So if you see these, I'm just saying that these are literally, these are the lower end of the spectrum as far as the quality. They're still good cars. They're just a little lower end on the quality scale. But definitely look it up. The other one's going to be Ertl. Now, I, now Ertl, even though it's a lower end company, they still made a really, they still made a lot of cool stuff. And we're going to actually search by highest price first because i want to say like i wonder what i wonder what hurdle cars that i remember that are worth a ton of money now <sighs> oh man so hurdle is pretty much uh we sold a, we sold a ton of these they're actually signed by the american graffiti guys yeah we actually sold a bunch of these too but what i'm saying is american muscle is Ertl. Whenever you see this American Muscle logo, it's basically a side uh, side brand from Ertl Collectibles. Ertl's definitely known for movie cars, and there's some pretty cool mo movie cars that Ertl made. And um, this would probably be on the lower scale. I would say Maisto is probably the lowest as far as quality, and then Ertl's like is above that, and then it goes to all the other higher ends. But I'm looking at these cars. I'm like, wow, Ertl, Ertl's prices have gone up. Subst oh, my God. Well, okay, now that makes sense. This is the Paul Walker. Because I was like, we used to sell these for like 15 bucks, And this one's going for like 200 bucks. But it's the Paul Walker car from Fast and Furious. No one would have thought, you know, with his death and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of weird. When Dale Earnhardt Sr. died, all his cars went, or all the, all the price of his stuff went up. And every time there's an actor or something that happens... Wow, Ertl has gone up in value a lot. So I'm learning some new stuff here too, guys. Oh, Chip Foose, that's cool. So yeah, that's pretty much die-cast cars in a nutshell. So I hope that you guys actually learned a little bit of something today on this Know Your Stuff video about die-cast cars. There's a lot to learn about this stuff, but what I said, if you just basically know of the brands, that's a good start to, you know, the things that you can find. And like I said, if you can find any diecast cars for under 20 bucks in the box sealed, it's a pretty good buy. 
And so, uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions about diecast cars, please leave them in the comments below. If there's something I missed or there's something that you know that I didn't mention that was worth mentioning, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything from this video, please click the like button and also check out my other Know Your Stuff videos. We talk about all kinds of different collectibles to expand your knowledge base because I know a lot of people aren't into hard goods. A lot of people sell clothing and stuff like that. I've been in the hard goods since I was literally out of the womb. <laughs> so I, I have a pretty good amount of knowledge about all these different things and that's why I make these videos to help you guys so you don't have to suffer through five years of learning this stuff like day to day you can easily just go and check out these videos so once again i'm chris at thrift shop hustler we're almost at four thousand subscribers and i know we're going to hit that soon so if you're not subscribed to this channel and you want to learn so you can earn click the like button subscribe button and the bell if you want to get notified every time i pop on one of these crazy shows anyways i'm chris at thrift shop hustler peace out